key uh, features in my recipe. So yeah, uh, I'm going to assist you guys uh, to you know build up the bridge model really fast and uh, you know get the uh, some research values uh, from the my recipe. Uh, my name is Lucas, and uh, today I'm going I'm in charge of these uh, training sessions. So today, uh, May 17th, uh, we are going to go over the uh, tutorials and uh, I'm going to go over the how you can extract the uh, result values uh, from uh, analysis. And then the day after tomorrow, I'm going to explain the multi-curve. So if you guys are like our users or like if you guys have interest in like create a multi-curve, uh, I hope uh, you to be able to uh, you know come to our uh, webinar uh, the day after tomorrow. And then once you uh, take my training sessions, and then if you cannot, uh, you know, like understand some of them, uh, some of like the features, or if you need more assistance, uh, please uh, contact us. Uh, you know, you can uh, contact us uh, like uh, through the phone, or you can send us email uh, through uh, MidasSoft and MidasStudio.com. And our, our uh, engineers or our uh, CAE consultant will help you to, you know, finish the project. Uh, so, yeah, there will be uh, great things. <clears throat> so, uh, today is, uh, is uh, like, this event is uh, for the uh, new customers. And also our current users who are not familiar with uh, Steel Composite uh, module. So uh, today I'm going to, you know, um, like uh, go over the tutorial based uh, like a modeling process. And also I'm going to show you how you can get the uh, analysis and result values. So today's overview is I'm going to briefly introduce uh, our tutorial. You probably have that tutorial file uh, with a PDF file. And uh, you guys, uh, you know, maybe like uh, go over the some of like uh, uh, like uh, steps. Uh, but today I'm going to give you some brief idea how you can utilize uh, this tutorial. And next step is I'm going to explain the wizard functions and also how you can uh, set up the uh, moving load uh, cases and uh, how you can review the moving load wizard. And the last step is uh, I will just collect all the research values and I will put that on the uh, Microsoft Word. So I will extract the research values uh, from Midas Civil uh, with a, like a three different format. The first format is a diagram. The second is the table format. And the third is graphical format. And next, uh, the, finally, I will put all those formats on a dynamic report generator. So what does, uh, what does this mean is... Um, uh, we uh, like uh, we call the dynamic report generator, uh, which is uh, one of our functions. You can bring the Microsoft Word in Midas Civil, and you can put the, all the rejected de uh, data and the values in Midas Civil. So generally, uh, you know, you build up the model and run the analysis, and you can just uh, you know stop, you know, and uh, you can use the analysis values uh, for your design or like a load rating, but you know, we have the like a design check functions and you can uh, uh, take a one step more and you can get the sum of the uh, design uh, limit state from Midas Civil. And then finally, you can get the Excel report. So today, uh, we are going to, uh, you know, go over the modeling part and analysis part. And uh, through this uh, state composite gutter bridge wizard, you can create a steel eye gutter and a top gutter or box gutters. So even um, this is one widget, uh, you can uh, you know, create a three different types of the sections. So it is very simple. Uh, before you, uh, you know, going into the widget, uh, you can just uh, create a sections and you can define the sections and you can bring into the widget and you can uh, set up some bridge geometry and uh, some of the uh, gutter layout and bracing layout, and uh, you know, define the load in the widget, and you can uh, create a bridge, you know, a model really quickly. And also, we provide uh, our frame, our plate, or we, uh, you know, in this widget, this one widget can create a different types of the, uh, you know, a bridge. I mean, the same bridge, but you can, uh, you know, simulate uh, different uh, modeling types. 
So basically, like for the design purpose, you, you don't really need to get into our plate. Uh, but like if you are like a bridge project, when you do the like load rating or like a design, um, you know, if you need a more like a deeper study, you can use the plate element, which give you more like the accurate research values. And if you guys uh, need to use the surface uh, loading, you can use the like a DAG as plate and a gutter as frame. So when you uh, model the DAG as plate element, uh, you can get a more like accurate values. That's why uh, our users prefer to use, you know, like a, a different modeling type depending on their project uh, like a depth. And this is the uh, a uh, like example uh, for the uh, you know like a drawing program import and export. So these are like you know uh, you can just uh, I don't think this one worked right now. Uh, but simply uh, speaking, you can um, import the lines from the, your drawing program. Let's say if you have a flaming uh, like a frame plane. Uh, in your uh, drawing program, you can uh, import the line information and you can define the material and section property and you can get the, uh, you know, bridge model to run the analysis uh, for your, you know, structure analysis. And the last thing, once you get the bridge model, you can, uh, you know, take the load combination and also this one. Uh, we already have the H2 LLFD code in uh, our program. So you can automatically generate the, your uh, load combinations. And based on the uh, analysis values, you can create uh, load combinations and you can get the uh, like, uh, envelope uh, values, like as you can see on like the right side on here. The last thing is, like I said, uh, you can get the design check. And uh, each element can be, uh, you know, like a check. Uh, and uh, once you set up the sum parameters, you can get the uh, design uh, check, uh, you know, through the gutters. And also, for the substructure part, uh, it's, I guess the webinar will be uh, like uh, July or June. Uh, you know, one of our uh, engineer engineers will talk about the uh, how you can uh, design the substructures, uh, peer cab or peer columns uh, through Midas Civil. Uh, so substructure part is very, uh, you know, great, I guess, uh, you can, uh, the program automatically design the peer cab and peer column. And over there, you can also put the steel reinforcement or if you guys do the like a bank cab, you can also put the like a post tension on there. So yeah, I mean like a Midas Civil is in one platform, you can uh, uh, play with uh, your project very well. And uh, lastly, uh, you can see some of the, uh, you can, as you can see here is the Excel report. And uh, you can uh, get the, uh, the research values. Uh, you can see the sum of the equation right now. So as, uh, here are the list uh, to check the, your design uh, through Midas Civil. So this is a brief like a presentation. And uh, let me uh, briefly go over the, uh, our like tutorial uh, we made for this event. So you can see uh, here is the some overview at the very first page, and you can see the some of the information about the like a bridge overview. And then um, you can uh, you know uh, first of all uh, I put the like a unit definitions so. I mean, even our users, uh, they don't know about the, how you can define the deeper setting uh, for the unit. So here are these, uh, you know, step-by-step, -step, like a procedures, how you can change your unit, like instantly, or you can just make a permanent uh, deeper setting for your uh, project. So you can just follow this part, and here also I uh, explain the how you can, uh, you know, like define the like material properties and um, steel and concrete. And also you can see the sum of the section property on here. So this tutorial uh, explain more thing, uh, more than just a modeling part. And uh, this tutorial, you know, like I was trying to give you more like idea how the program work, uh, you know, depending on your project. So here are some of the uh, basic like fundamental uh, information in here. So even if you are not, uh, you know, like you don't really do uh, some of the, um, like a steel composite bridge. If you read through these uh, tutorials, you can find the how 
might have civil work with respect to modeling process. So these are the uh, you know you know definition of the uh, some of the uh, the plate gutters and also angle sections and a T sections and uh, you can see the some of the uh, like uh, I just put the some of uh, like a step by step uh, for the steel composite bridge widget. So you can just follow this stuff and uh, you can uh, you know get the bridge model uh, exactly and you can submit the report to us, but uh, through this, uh, you know, uh, event, through this, um, uh, the training session, I will hope you to be able to uh, understand the, uh, uh, what is MIDA civil, uh, what's the value, and uh, how you can fast, you know, like a model the bridge. So once you, like, you know, define the sum of the basic uh, bridge geometry, uh, you can define the section uh, on here. And also, I put the some of the you know visual aids uh, you know to increase your understanding of this uh, like uh, project. So you can find it uh, on here. And uh, also, I put the all the like uh, you know dead load, how you can define the dead load and a live load on here. And also construction stages and you know, how you can after outside of the wizard uh, how you can define the moving load like this way. You can just follow this step on here and uh, wizard values so at the end of this tutorial uh, you can find the uh, some of the uh, the requirement uh, you know uh, what uh, you know values you need to submit and uh, I put the, those things um, you know, those like wizard values uh, at the end of the uh, tutorial so once you follow this tutorial and uh, you can, you know, like um, submit your report just following this tutorial. So please, uh, you know, read uh, this tutorial very carefully uh, before you, you know, submit the report to, to our, you know, win the prize. So uh, these are the um, uh, tutorial uh, brief introductions. And then... Um, Let me uh, just uh, jumping into Maira Silva. So before I uh, explaining the uh, the visual things, uh, I want you to know uh, what types of the bridge model I'm you know like uh, trying to build up today. So as you can see, those are the uh, support conditions, and uh, those are the like uh, like you know uh, like you can see the at the hexagon. You can see the like you know some of the like a DOF degree of freedom, and as you can see, uh, those are the three uh, continuous span, and then when once you just uh, like uh, rotate the bridge a little bit, you can see the four gutters uh, lay on this uh, state composite bridge, and you can see the so many like uh, diaphragms on here, and you can see uh, this bridge is a little bit like you know skewed. And your support line is also skewed on here. And uh, definitely, uh, this is the uh, those like cross frame um, like node is uh, bounded by bridge link, uh, uh, you know, from the uh, the gutter uh, node and element. So uh, those are the uh, bridge model uh, we're gonna try. We are going to try to you know build up today. And um, so let me just uh, get rid of the second tree menu to give you more, uh, you know, uh, space to you know review. I'm I mean the like uh, view the this uh, model. And then um, let me just uh, go to uh, structure and uh, let me uh, turn on the state composite bridge a uh, wizard. So under the structure tab, you can see so many uh, the widget uh, to help you to create a, create a bridge model really fast and really accurately. So with a with a high accuracy, you can uh, you know get the, this bridge model uh, through the widget. So this is a stick composite bridge, and uh, this is a pre-stress uh, composite bridge. And now uh, you can see uh, some of other like you know functions such as ray track analysis. Also, you can get the ray track 
uh, like a model, a 3D finite element model uh, through this uh, the wizard. But today uh, we are going to focus on the uh, the state composite bridge. Before I jump into layout and section and load and construction uh, stage, I'm going to explain the this like functions. So you can uh, freely open your wizard, uh, which means you can save your wizard files. So uh, those like text input information can be saved. So once you finish your project, and uh, the next coming project is a similar one, a similar bridge geometry, you can just create a bridge model uh, through the, this uh, open uh, functions and uh, save as functions. So I will just uh, bring up the, the you know, like uh, a wizard file. And this is the, uh, your, like, uh, based on your tutorial. So <clears throat> the first over, um, we have the four tabs, layout, section, load, and construction stages. So each tab has each purpose. And a layout tab, you can define the bridge geometry. And also, from there, you can define the substructure portions as well. And uh, when you go to sections, this one is for the, uh, the gutter section layout and the gutter sections. I mean, the bracing um, like information on here. You can create a V brace or X brace or inverted V brace through uh, these uh, bracing details, uh, like a functions. And then you can also define the, the diaphragms layout on here. And uh, under the load tab, you define the dead load and you can define the live load. But after you create a bridge model, uh, you will see, depending on the construction stages, uh, different like a dead load will be applied. So this uh, load, if you don't like to put the, your load uh, on here, it is fine. But this widget, uh, when you create a bridge model, it's not just giving you the uh, node and element and sections and layout things, but also it will give you the, uh, the, the dead load information and live load information uh, like related to uh, different construction stages. And then when you go to construction stages, you can see the like a deferred setting. Uh, this one is just like a basic things, but also you can do the like uh, simulate the depth polling sequence. Also, you can put the reinforcement uh, for the uh, uh, deck portions under uh, negative moment. I mean the tensioner uh, portions. So let me just uh, start over uh, again. I mean, uh, let me talk about the layout. So. Like I said, you can define the composite steel eye, steel box, steel top. I mean, like, uh, if you choose, if you are, uh, I mean, if you decide to go with a steel eye, you might need to have the steel eye sections before. So, and uh, if you, I mean, if you, uh, you know, want to go with a steel box, you might need to, uh, you know, have the steel box sections, or if you, uh, decide to go with a uh, top, uh, you need to have the uh, top section. So, on here, uh, today, our uh, training session is for the steel eye. So, I will select the steel eye on here. And a modeling type, as you can see, you can see the R frame, and uh, R plate, and a deck as plate, and a gutter as frame. Give me a second. I uh, I get the uh, questions and uh, I can see uh, some of you guys said uh, there is no sound. Uh, give me a second. Let me just uh, quickly check the sound.
Okay, I think the sound works. Uh, but if you if you guys uh, can I hear my voice, uh, I will uh, upload this uh, you know like a training session on our website. So uh, you know if you guys need to leave right now, if you guys cannot hear my voice, you know uh, you guys can you know go out and uh, you can uh, take a listen to this training session after. Uh, I mean uh, tomorrow I will upload this video tomorrow. So, <clears throat> yeah, I explained the uh, modeling type. So for the design, if you want to, uh, you know, take a step uh, uh, further more than just analysis, uh, I uh, recommend you to use the R frame. Uh, our design check is possible uh, when you, you know, create a bridge model uh, like a, with a, like a frame element. So I hope you to uh, understand this part. So you can use the R plate, uh, but that is for the analysis, uh, you know, like a process. But if you decide, if you create a your bridge model uh, without frame element, you can get the uh, design check values. And uh, you can see the, like a span information on here, right? So like, this one, uh, this bridge model has a, uh, the first span has the 80 feet, the next span has a 100 feet, and the next that, uh, the next span is uh, 80 feet again. So that's why uh, I put the 80 comma, uh, 100 comma and 80. So this one comma like distinguish the span. So the first span is 80 feet, and uh, the second span is a 100 feet, and third span is 80 feet. And also here is a uh, total deck width. So the reason we put the, like a total deck width is uh, to create a, uh, I mean, your like a barrier load are like a very at the edge of the deck. So like uh, once you tell the program, uh, this uh, this bridge is uh, total deck width is this much, and the program will uh, generate the uh, deck width uh, for you. And you can see, you can find the, like a different skew angle on different uh, support lines. So you can see the abutment one, pier one, and pier two, and uh, abutment two. So like uh, depending on the, I mean, uh, if your if your support skew angle varies uh, through the uh, entire deck, uh, you can uh, create a different skew angle on different support line. So. This bridge model at the above one, it has the skew angle is uh, 9.374. And now uh, you can see, uh, if you just uh, refer to this configuration, you might know how you can define the uh, support skew angles. And also more detail is on the uh, our tutorial. So please refer to uh, our tutorial. And then layout offset is, uh, you can just define the simply you can think uh, this one is uh, define the location of the your baseline of the bridge. So here I said uh, it's a zero, which means the baseline is uh, at the uh, like a center line of the deck. Or you know it's up to you if you want to put your reference line at the edge of the deck. So you might put the here like a uh, 33.5 uh, divided by two. So which means your reference line is at the edge of the deck. And also like if you want to create a, your um, like a radius, which means if you want to make your bridge model, um, if you want to put the, your radius information, which means you gonna have the a curve bridge. So in that case, uh, you can uh, put the radius information with respect to baseline you define on here. And uh, our uh, tutorial, we don't have the uh, the substructures, but also you can create a substructures uh, through the wizard. So here, bearing type, uh, you know, some of our clients are uh, asking me about the, this, like, you know, function support and uh, elastic link. So if you go with a support, which means uh, at the gutters, you just uh, put the support uh, like uh, directly. But if you put the like elastic link, you can uh, put the like bearings. I mean, the you can define the bearings 
you know, like with a different stiffness. And uh, so put the elastic link and the underneath of the elastic link, you will define the like a support uh, DOF from there. It's up to you, okay? And uh, when you define the width substructures, you can see the like a peer cap and peer columns, and uh, you can uh, define the some of the uh, your substructure portions. So, like uh, about the substructures, uh, you know, you can make the taper sections. If you have the section about the uh, taper, you can create a taper sections and. Um, uh, right now, uh, I mean, in the in inside of the widget, uh, uh, there is uh, no like a limitation about the uh, the number of the column. As you can see, uh, you can see that if you just uh, enter the spacing information on here, you can get the, as many as uh, like a columns you want. But for the uh, this event, uh, we are not ask we are not asking you to create a substructures, so all you need to focus on is uh, superstructures portions. So for the under uh, layout tab, uh, if you have the span information, uh, how long each span is, if you know that information and uh, what is the total deck width, and uh, the support skew angles and radius, which uh, your bridge model is curved or, or curved or not, and uh, if you are not gonna um, put the like elastic link, or if you just uh, you know put the support, you know depending on your project, depending on your preference, uh, you can define the uh, basic geometry of bridge on here. Uh, let me go to section on here. So the reason you put the deck thickness is uh, you know uh, when you uh, define the sections. On here there is uh, already uh, the thickness of the deck but the reason you put the like a total I mean the deck thickness uh, under the sections uh, even uh, you already defined your uh, total deck thickness I mean the deck thickness uh, on section dialog box is uh, this one is for uh, you know telling the program I'm going to make the transverse element uh, with uh, this uh, deck thickness so for the 2D release analysis, uh, you know the gutter is just uh, you know going through the uh, going through with uh, uh, longitudinal directions. So which means it is a beam element, and uh, the load uh, will be distributed uh, with uh, longitudinal directions. But this gutter has a four, and uh, you know like uh, actual bridge model. Uh, will just transfer the load with uh, uh, to the the other gutters. So in order to simulate the deck situations, uh, we put the transverse deck element, which is a dummy deck. We call the dummy deck because uh, it is a wellies, but it contains the same stiffness of the concrete deck uh, you defined under the uh, section dialog box. And then uh, here are the uh, number of gutters. So as you can see. Uh, this one has the uh, four gutters, right? So four gutters, and uh, you put the like a baseline at the center line of the deck. So number one, uh, the number one is a negative thirteen point five feet apart from the uh, the baseline, the center line of the deck. So this one is uh, located on here, and then as you can see. Um, uh, this like a gutter number one is negative thirteen point thirteen point five feet apart from the baseline, and the gutter number two is negative four point five uh, four point five feet apart from the baseline, and uh, the other side gutter number three is uh, like uh, positive four point five feet uh, feet apart from the uh, baseline on here. And the last gutter, uh, this one is, uh, you know, apart from the, uh, apart, uh, thirteen point five feet apart from the baseline. So if you know the how many gutters you want, how many gutters you need for your project, and then if you know the like uh, the geometry of for the uh, gutter layout, you can put the that information on here. So you can, uh, you know, uh, tell the program the gutter will be uh, uh, the the four different gutters will be uh, will be located uh, like this way, 
And uh, this one for the material thing, material uh, definition is very intuitive. So I don't really need to explain these things. But that portions you are gonna use the grade C4 uh, 4500. And for cutters, I'm going to use uh, this uh, 50 KSI. And for the bracing, I'm going to use the uh, the A36 on here. So once you uh, you know tell the program what material property you want to use, and as you can see on these tables, the program will automatically generate these informations for you, like materials and sections on here. And then spacing, this one is a transfer stack element, and you can see the like spacing is five feet. So which means the each transverse element has a spacing uh, with a, uh, I mean, with a, a space, a five feet uh, spacings. So each uh, like a transverse element will have the five feet uh, spacing. And uh, usually, um, uh, you know, it's depending on the project. But uh, usually, our users use a transverse deck element like you know five feet to uh, ten feet. If you make the, your transverse element uh, really little, like such as one feet, it is fine. Program will create a transfer stack element for you, which means you're going to have more accurate uh, result values. Uh, but it will take uh, more time than just uh, defining your transfer stack element spacing as a five feet. So, uh, you know, you can, uh, depending on your, you know, like the time phase, depending on your project, you can, you know, use your transfer stack element spacing uh, differently. And then uh, this angle type, this one, it says perpendicular, which means your transfer stack element will lay uh, you know, perpendicular to your reference line, I mean the center line of the deck. And if you just uh, uh, click the skew, and it will just follow the skew angle you define for the uh, support the skew uh, lines. So, but usually you can use a perpendicular, or if you want to have the special um, the transfer uh, deck element layout, you can also, you know, make the user define and you can uh, enter the angle. So this information on this box, uh, you, you're you going to put the, like, uh, angle information uh, between the negative uh, 75 degree to a positive 75 degrees. And then when you uh, click the bracing details, you can see um, here, um, if you just want to put the single beam, you can also do that. And uh, But uh, if you want to get the actual forces values, um, you can, uh, you know, use um, this like uh, the bracing uh, options. So. You don't really need to, uh, you know, create the top brace, uh, top and a middle portion of bracing and a uh, bottom portions. Uh, you can just uh, once you check off this box, uh, you don't uh, create a top uh, cord. So this one will have the if you like create a bracing like this way, there is no top cord and there will be only like a bracing portion and a bottom cord on here. And uh, this one just, uh, you know, give you more example, I mean, give you the, uh, I mean, you know, defining these uh, portions, you can uh, tell the program what is the distance between the uh, very top flange to a uh, center line of the angle sections of the uh, top cord. So you can define the where you can, you want to put the, your uh, the diaphragms. So it's depending on your you know, project again. So this one, uh, like the bracing details is for uh, defining the shape of the diaphragm. And then uh, you can find uh, like a spacing. So if you have, if you know the how many division you need uh, for, um, for uh, each span, you can just use the division information, division option on here, or um, like this way, if you know the distance between the cross frame, you can just enter like a five uh, comma six comma five, which means very first span, the cross frame, uh, the, the spacing between the cross frame is five feet, and uh, the second span is six feet, and third span is five uh, feet. 
and you can see the like angle type on here. Also, you can uh, make the, your like diaphragms uh, follow the uh, skew angle you defined before on the layout tab. Uh, so a skew uh, support lines. So, but uh, if you are, you know, if you are like a cross frame is not skewed, you can just use a perpendicular, and it will just uh, like uh, the cross frame uh, will be laid um, uh, perpendicular to uh, your reference line. And also, you can uh, define the uh, special like you know angle. Uh, just uh, clicking the uh, usual define on here. It's up to you. And uh, this one is for the, uh, you know, uh, at the support one, which means it's uh, above one one. So here will be above one one. And uh, like a support two, this one is a peer one. And a support three, this one is a peer two. And a support four, uh, this is uh, above one two. So depending on your, I mean, you can define your uh, cross frame uh, sections, cross frame shape, uh, uh, depending on your support uh, support locations. So this one means uh, minus civil. We are trying to give you a more like you know freedom to define your uh, you know like a model uh, you know without any limitations. And then you can see the <coughs> color information on here. Color number one, color number two, color number three, color number four. The reason there is a color, a four gutter section is because you define the uh, like a number of gutters like here on like a four. So if you just change this one as five, there will be a uh, like five gutters. And then um, here, um, as you can see, you can see the like a different like a gutter sections on different locations, right? So you can uh, enter those information on here. So for example, so this one is uh, Here is a gutter number one. So gutter number one from 0 to uh, 64 feet uh, There is a section uh, Let's say this is called EX uh, underscore a section uh, Section underscore two this section is used uh, from 0 to 64 and the next yellow like sections can be used uh, from 64 to 100, I will just choose the uh, this one as uh, uh, exterior gutter section number one. So, like this way, uh, you can have a different like uh, gutters on here. So the reason why you put the, this like uh, you know gutters like a different uh, demand size, I mean different size of the plate gutter is because you wanna you know optimize your uh, design uh, for the steel. So. In that case, uh, you can, uh, you know, like change your, you know, plate gutter uh, dimensions on here, and you can get the, this like a different gutter variation on here. So this one is also, you know, very important to know. And uh, you can see the uh, here generate the tenth point element, which means on this gutter one, there will be a program will tell you. Uh, like a tenth point on uh, each gutters. So when you extract the result values, you can see that. I will explain this one later on. And when you go to load, uh, you can define the uh, the you know location of the dead load, dead load of the component, or dead load of the future wearing surfaces load. You can just define the, those uh, load information on here. So here uh, I just put the like wet co uh, wet concrete load like like this way so if you know the weight density and if you know the thickness of the concrete deck uh, you can uh, define the I mean you can define the weight concrete load and with this given information uh, might as civil will apply the like a uh, distributed load uh, above the steel gutters so the typing the proper load information is very important in steel composite gutter bridge widget because uh, this like the load information will uh, influence your uh, modeling on here, and you can see the barriers. And if you don't want to make the uh, median strip, you can just check off this box, and you can also define the uh, wearing surfaces load on here. And then uh, those are the uh, the dead load, and uh, you can see the here 
before uh, composite and after composite and DC is dead load of component and attachment and DW is dead load of the visual wearing surfaces load. So this one before composite, uh, before the like uh, steel plate and concrete is, uh, before the concrete is hardened above the steel plate gutters, uh, this one is a before composite status. Uh, there will be uh, the wet concrete load and foam work and self weight of the steel gutters and a bracing, I mean the cross frame, will be activated at the very first stage. And after composite, after the like a hardened, after the concrete is hardened, the will be wet concrete load will be uh, you know removed uh, at the next stage. And then the program will apply the barrier load at the location you define on here. B1 and B5, and then if you have the median strip, uh, also program will you know apply the this load, and then finally after you put the your like a barrier load and median strip load, or if you need to put the like a like additional load, such as if you wanna consider the uh, the a numerous ramp along with the uh, your deck, or you can also put the like additional load, and you can put the you can simulate. Uh, those like a dead load of a component and then after that uh, program uh, DW uh, which is a dead load, dead load of the fissure wearing surfaces load will be applied on here and then here um, you can see uh, uh, H2LRFD on here and uh, let me see uh, this one so on here <coughs> Um, I cannot turn off. I mean, I mean, I cannot turn on uh, this like a moving load code because uh, the result values will be gone. But I will just uh, open up the uh, the tutorial and I will explain this part. So <clears throat> here, um, you can define the moving load case. Uh, you know, you can uh, tell the program what types of the code you want to use. And uh, this project, we will talk about the H2 LRFD. And uh, you, once you click the define moving load case, and you can see this dialog box and select the H2 LRFD and click OK. And next step is define traffic line lane. Uh, you just tell the program uh, where is the traffic line lanes. And you can just, uh, as you can see, the first traffic line lane is. Um, located um, at the uh, the nine feet apart from the this edge and uh, the second uh, traffic line lane is uh, 24.5 feet apart from the edge on here reference line so this reference line does not have something to do with uh, the reference line you define the on the layout tab this reference line is at the left side edge of the deck and then you define the uh, like a define the vehicles and you can see the once you click the define vehicles and you can find the, some of the uh, vehicle information on here so this one only show you the uh, Asia 93 trucks but uh, steel composite modules uh, it you can also do the like load rating so we have the good library for the uh, legal or permit trucks so you can find it uh, the your you know proper uh, legal or permit truck information uh, under the our uh, vehicle uh, informations, and then when you after that uh, you just create the uh, the load informations, but not yet you didn't define the moving load case. So moving load case uh, will be defined outside of the widget, and I will show you that later on. And then you can see if you don't want to create a construction stages, you can just check off this box. But if you want to put the like construction stages, you can uh, just turn on this box. I mean, check on this box, and you can see the different construction stages. So the first stage, the gutter and cross frames are activated, and then the next stage, stage two one, you can see the wet concrete load uh, will be activated on here, and uh, all deck is activated and a dead load of component and attachment is activated and a future wearing surfaces load is activated and it will go to the long-term effect. So 
excuse me. Uh, but if you want to uh, like uh, simulate the uh, deck pooling sequence on here, uh, you can tell the program each like deck portions, which deck uh, portion activate first and uh, later on which portion is activated. So you can just tell the program, uh, you know, as you can see, for the first deck stage, D1, D3, D5, uh, which is, uh, you know, uh, you can see uh, this one is just uh, just configuration, but uh, this one is uh, based on the uh, negative and uh, a positive moment uh, a contra, uh, contra flexure point. So this one has the, uh, as you can see, like this one uh, has the five, you can have the five different like a depth, uh, sequence on here. Like uh, around the support, when you just uh, think of the, your uh, self-weight uh, moment values, moment diagram, uh, around the support, those two, like a peer one and peer two, you might have the, if you just think of the self-weight, you might have the negative moment, right? And then uh, once you tell the program uh, how much your negative moment region is, you, you can define the, uh, like a uh, deck uh, polling, uh, you know, uh, here uh, you can just uh, define the length of the D1, D2, D3, D4, D5. And you can just uh, make the, uh, you can just uh, put the, some information for the deck polling sequence and then you can complete the uh, deck polling sequence like this way. And how you can define the length of the D1, uh, which is possible, you can just tell the program negative moment zone length, which is uh, uh, here is a, from here to here, around here, it will be a D1. And uh, you can just tell the program if it is a 35, from this support area, uh, from this support uh, point, uh, like on each side, 35 feet and 35 feet will be negative moment, and which is a D2. So, uh, you can just uh, simulate your depth polling sequence based on the uh, self weight of the uh, your uh, self weight of the gutters, uh, and uh, you can uh, you know you can assume that how much uh, the like a negative moment uh, zone length will be. So uh, yeah, uh, you know based on that information, you can define the depth polling sequence on here, and then <clears throat> also. Uh, uh, when you have the negative moment, you can also define the uh, steel reinforcement on here. And uh, when the uh, analysis is done, uh, when you uh, your section is under negative moment, at the steel uh, reinforcement will uh, produce the uh, tensioner uh, like a stresses, tensioner like a forces on here. So uh, when the uh, plate gutter is under negative moment at the like a deck portions. The concrete part does not, you know, uh, you know, like uh, does not help help to uh, help the 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 whole like composite section to like uh, produce the uh, tension of forces on here. So my receiver, when you uh, put the steel reinforcement like uh, information on here, uh, when the analysis uh, while the analysis process, the tension of forces will be. Uh, like uh, exerted only uh, from the steel reinforcement on here. So this is pretty much about the uh, the steel uh, composite gutter bridge widget. So once you uh, complete the, those like informations and uh, before you click the OK, uh, I hope you to be able to uh, remember uh, click the save as and uh, save your widget file, text input information and then uh, you can use that uh, next project as well. So after uh, you put the, all those informations and you can get the uh, this like a model informations. It's kind of like and now uh, you can see the stage one only like steel gutters and our uh, cross frames are activated and stage two dash one. Uh, there is nothing, but here red concrete load is applied on some of the portion on here. And on uh, stage two dash two, you can see the uh, D one, D 
D3, D5, that portion is hardened. And 2-3, the rest of part, the wet concrete load is applied on here. And 2-4, you can see the whole section, a whole like a, the concrete part is hardened. So you can have the a complete bridge models. But after that, you can see the barrier load is applied on here at the edge of the deck. And also there is a future wearing surface load is applied on here, entire deck. Okay, and uh, let me just, uh, you know, like uh, how you can extract the uh, result values, uh, you know, referring to the, uh, the tutorial. Give me a second. So uh, I have a couple of questions. Um, okay. Uh, so uh, I will uh, I will talk about the two questions. The first question is how to define the splice location and a splice design. So uh, splice design and a supply a splice design a uh, mighty civil um, uh, cannot uh, cannot do the splice design for you but at least uh, once you check on this box and once you tell the program where is the splice locations and uh, you can extract the splice result values such as uh, forces or uh, so on you can Simply, you can easily, uh, you know, extract the result values. So, yeah, uh, might as well on do the the splice design for you. But you can uh, tell the program where is the splice, and you can get the the result values from there. Uh, I did okay. So again, uh, under the section tab, and you can find the splice on here. And you can uh, tell the program where is the splices, and you can get the result values on here. Can you guys see the splice on here, right? And the second question is, give me a second. So uh, I I don't know how to turn on the um, the question things on here, but. Um, I guess the question was about the P1 and a P2. So this one is uh, like, <clears throat> okay, so you can see the like uh, the after composite and once you turn, check on this box, additional load, and you can see you can put the load information for the additional load and you can see the like the position and for the P1. This one is with respect to the re uh, reference line at the like uh, you know, left side. Uh, like uh, edge of the deck, so you can just uh, you know define the uh, the additional load. Uh, for example, your lamp will be aligned uh, right next to the uh, the barrier. Let's say this barrier is 1.5, and uh, this one is just like you know a program when you enter the 1.5, it will just uh, put the uh, barrier load at the center of the gravity. So which is uh, uh, from the edge to the uh, 0.75 feet apart from the uh, the edge. And uh, additional load also, you can see, let's say I just, uh, okay, I, I forgot to turn on the uh, uh, screen on here. Okay, so you can see the like uh, additional load on here, right? So when you see like, such as your uh, ramp uh, load is such as uh, uh, point like one, and you can see like uh, your like a ramp um, is located at the um, the two feet apart from the apart from the reference line here, and then you can uh, put uh, information on here like this way. But this like a P one 
uh, will be under the uh, category of the after composite uh, for the dead load of component and attachment. And a P2 will be activated at the construction stage after composite uh, when the wear, uh, future wearing surface load are activated. So uh, those are, you know, like you can, uh, the way of the defining the load is the same, but the when you put the like a, a P1, if you want to use the P1, the activated uh, construction stage will be different uh, from the, uh, the P2 uh, load information on here. So, so um, I have one more question. Can the additional load be in point load in KIPS? Okay. Um, so this question, um, like, I mean, Maida Civil, when you use the Maida Civil, you can uh, define the uh, point load uh, above the uh, deck portions. But like right now, um, give me a sec. The additional load here, this one is expressed by uh, distributed load, so keep per feet. But like um, when you see on here, and uh, depending on the different construction stages, you can define the point load above the deck. Um, so like uh, that, uh, like a point load definition is possible outside of the widget. But in the widget, you can only like uh, put the additional load here. You can see the additional load is uh, just like uh, keep per feet, which is a distribute load. So outside of the widget, you can just define the point load on here. Okay. Uh, Okay, um, let me just uh, like um, you know move on because um, uh, we don't have much time to cover everything. Uh, for the rest of the questions, I will just uh, like uh, send you the email and uh, like I guess you guys put the email uh, information when you register this event. So the rest of the question, I will, uh, you know, send you guys an email. And uh, the first thing, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, define the, um, the, I hope that you guys can see, okay, this is true, okay. So the first one is, uh, I'm just wondering, the self weight of the um, the steel uh, steel plate and uh, bracings. So um, I just want to have the moment diagram from the F, uh, at the construction stage one, which activate only steel girders and uh, cross frames. So how you can get this that uh, diaphragm as you can see on here? Um, I will just uh, switch to the Mira Civil and uh, view initial view. Okay. So on here, and then uh, let me just uh, get rid of the uh, the node information here. Okay. So once you run the analysis, as you can see, uh, you can find the like a uh, perform analysis icon on here, or press F5, or go to analysis and uh, uh click the perform analysis icon on here. After you run the analysis, um, when you go to Reject, and uh, you can find the forces. So the Maida Civil uh, contain the uh, plate element and solid element structure analysis of uh, Reject values. But today, our uh, model is uh, based on the uh, frame element. So, uh, so I will go to beam diagram on here. And then uh, you can find the uh, some of the uh, the moving load cases 
and also those are the uh, I mean the load combinations I created on here. Uh, so about the load combination, just uh, please uh, refer to um, the tutorial, and you can get uh, what I'm going to uh, what I'm talking about. So the back to the uh, the point, and I'm going to extract the moment diagram and at construction stage one. So I will go to uh, construction stage one, and then you can see the like uh, here. Uh, CS summation and a dead load and erection load and uh, I will choose the uh, dead load of the uh, cross frame and uh, turn on the legend and then I'll uh, just make sure uh, M's of Y so M's of Y is just a moment values at the strong axis so I will choose the M's of Y on here and hit apply and you can get the uh, this uh, the moment diagram and I will just uh, the save this image file and uh, like a moment diagram uh, at uh, stage one and then when you go to like a, a tree menu and when you go to uh, like a report and uh, you can see the like this moment diagram at uh, stage one so after a while I will um, just uh, bring those like a diagram image uh, into my Microsoft Word that's why I saved this image file and then the next step is um, for the specific like a uh, gutter portions, I want to extract the uh, the like action, uh, shear uh, values and torsioner and a moment y and a moment like z uh, for uh, you know weak axis. So how you can get the like a table table information is on here. So here, but it was. Um, construction stage one at the construction stage one and you can see the triple uh, dot icon on here right and click this one and then you can see some of the uh, the like a uh, you know boxes on here so but I already defined the uh, like a uh, the gutter number two so I will go to structure group and you need to find the uh, like a gutter number two on here okay um, I didn't define the color number two on here. So if you just have interest on some uh, one like a colors, so this is color number one, color number two, color number three, and color number four. So I w if I want to just see the moment diagram at the construct at the color number two, uh, the first thing is you have to make the group on here. When you go to tree menu and you can find the structure groups. So I will just uh, make the group on here. So first thing is I will just activate the gutter portion only. So double click the gutter under the tree menu. And then when you go to view and when you click the activate, this is the gutter number two, right? So here I will just uh, select the uh, I will select only gutter number two. So how you can select this one is you can use the select by polygon. So I will uh, create a polygon drawing on here to select only uh, gutter number two. So I select the uh, only gutter number two. And then I will create a new structure groups. Okay, uh, let me just do this one again. Uh, select the double click the gutter and I'll activate the gutter portions and then uh, just I'll create the structure groups like G2. And you can see uh, there is a like a zero node and zero element I didn't define on here but I will just define the gutter number two 
and uh, using the select by polygon options and you can uh, select the gutter sections on here. And then I will just uh, drag and drop this gutter number two on here, right? So when you double click this one and you can see the only like gutter number two is activated on here, right? And then let me go to uh, the research value again. So go to forces beam diagram and uh, at the construction stage one. And then I just click the triple uh, triple dot icon on here. And then go to structure group. And now you can find the G2, right? Go to number two and I click replace. And I will select the dead load and uh, on here, uh, you can uh, select the uh, like construction stages. So I have interest in the construction stage one, right? And I check on this box and uh, part numbers. So in one element, you can have the five different, you can extract the five different wizard values. So part I and a part a uh, one quarter and a uh, one half and a uh, third quarters, you can see the like uh, different like a uh, part, you can extract the wizard values on here. And then I will click OK. And you can find the like uh, shear Y, shear G, and a torsion, and a moment Y, and moment Z. So here, I'm going to um, just uh, uh, save this uh, table information. So here, you can see the dynamic report table. And then you can just select the what component you want to use on here and click OK. And you can see the table information, you can find that I just uh, saved this table information by uh, capital B, uh, capital F, uh, which is a B force. So I'm going to uh, bring this uh, table information later on. And then one more thing, uh, if you want to just uh, create a graph uh, on this table, what you can do is uh, just select the element and uh, <clears throat> Uh, pressing control button and uh, click the uh, moment column and uh, right click and you can find the show graph on here and then you can just label the Y uh, let's say some moment uh, it's a strong axis moment just put the moment value and I uh, just for the graph title as graph a uh, moment and click OK and you can see the like a graphical uh, view on here so and then uh, the next thing is um, so I show you the uh, diagram and uh, I show you the uh, uh, like a uh, table information and I also I show you the graph uh, view on here and then uh, if you have interest in the like reaction values uh, at the uh, moving load case uh, you can see go to my civil again and uh, you can find the mean and max this one means uh, the maximum and um, uh, minimum values uh, when the uh, moving load case I mean the vehicles floating above the deck in the case, um, no, it's not. Uh, excuse me. Uh, I will just go to post the CS, and you can find the uh, some of the uh, MB max. MB means it's a moving load, so I will just select the moving load all, which contain the maximum moment and a uh, minimum moment, and click OK. And uh, beforehand, I will go to reaction values. Go to reactions. And uh, just to select the um, uh, moving all, uh, I mean the moving load, uh, like uh, contain the maximum case and minimum case, and hit apply. Uh, don't forget to check on the value box on here, and hit apply. Okay. I don't know why uh, here, uh, the, like a. Uh, it's supposed to be here, but right now some like a bug happened. But yeah, uh, but you can also save these reaction values 
uh, this uh, at the uh, dynamic dynamic report image and click OK. So so far, uh, I sh have shown you the uh, uh, how you can extract the uh, research values. Uh, so right now, the finally, I will use a dynamic report generator. So you can find it under tool, and you can find the dynamic report generator on here. And also, you can open up the uh, the previous document on here. But today, I'm going to put the like new document and click OK. So you can see Microsoft uh, Microsoft Word is in my table, and then I uh, create some of the uh, like images uh, before. So first of all, I will extract the uh, the moment diagram at the construction stage one, and drag and drop. You can find the uh, this like a moment diagram on here, and also I put the like a table information right. So I will uh, drag and drop this like a table information and you can see the like some of the uh, like values already uh, on this table uh, information and then uh, you already defined the section uh, uh, section properties so it's already in here you don't really need to redefine that you can do what you can do is you can just drag and drop on here and you can find the uh, the program automatically uh, create the section of uh, property for you. So this one is for uh, before composite, and this is after composite. And a program will let you know where is a neutral axis, uh, you know, with a different uh, status. So you can uh, extract the uh, report like this way, and. Uh, uh, you can find the order uh, for the uh, dynamic report generator here. Uh, I put the, like uh, some of the uh, research values orders. So I hope you to uh, follow this order, and then uh, you can uh, you know submit. Once you submit the uh, report to us, uh, we're gonna review those like report features, and uh, we will check whether you um, like follow uh, our rules. And uh, if you guys, uh, you know, if your report is satisfied, uh, all the requirements, uh, we're going to, you know, let you know uh, you're going to get the uh, prize. So before uh, I uh, close, uh, close this one, let me just... Uh, um, like answer some of the questions. Oh yeah, um, I have the uh, very uh, very important uh, the questions, uh, which is about the uh, uh, bearing stiffeners. So bearing stiffeners, um, that one is um, yeah. Uh, you can also put the, like a bearing stiffener uh, in the program on here. Um, let me just uh, give me a second. Let me just find it on here. So for the various stiffeners, Yeah, um, uh, you can put the, your uh, bearing stiffener. Um, yeah, now I activate my screen. Uh, so the bearing stiffener, um, once you are uh, you know, done with the uh, analysis, and uh, when you go to like design, and you can find the like a transfer stiffener, the definition on here. So you can put the like a transfer stiffener, I mean the bearing stiffener with a different like a shape. We provide a flat and we provide a T shape. So once you uh, define the uh, those like stiffener uh, and uh, you can put the, your stiffener 
uh, on like each section on here. So yeah, transfer stiffener is possibly uh, you know considered in my civil. So okay. All right. Uh, if you guys if you guys uh, don't have uh, more questions, I will uh, finish this training sessions. So um, if you have more questions about this uh, training session or if you guys want to you know, learn more about the steel composite bridge, uh, you guys can uh, you know, request the one-on-one -on -one meeting to us and we will help you to uh, you know, like build up your uh, skills and uh, build up your knowledge about the steel composite bridge uh, through MyDeciple. So thanks for coming here today and uh, I will uh, reply back to all the questions if I you know, answer your question right now. And I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you.